This is Katie. And this is Derek. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the break, break room. room. Yo, welcome back to another episode of The Break Room. I'm Derek. I'm Katie. And this is The, the Break, break room. room. We're in a break room. We get to have conversations that don't normally happen in the hallways. That's true. They don't happen in the parking lots. They don't happen at happy hour. They don't happen at uh, the end of the year celebration. The Break Room is so unique that we got to have a whole podcast designated specifically for The Break Room. I agree. Well, how many break rooms did you say you've been in in your professional career? Oh, my goodness. Well, when I worked in high school, there mm-hmm. were, like, several. Wow. So, like, if you wanted, there was a there was a couch to cry on. Mm. We called it the cry couch. The cry couch? Yeah. I like the alliteration there. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, and you could snuggle up and cry on the cry couch. Um, there are several, even in the middle school, there were a couple. Mm-hmm. So, it just depends on, on where you want to go. But mm-hmm. I've been in... I'm not going to say hundreds. I was going to say hundreds. I mean, maybe in other schools where I'm facilitating and workshopping and mm-hmm. PDing, mm-hmm. but schools that I actually worked in where I went to the cry couch, ten. I don't know, maybe well, 10, maybe 12. I think the break room is um, a place of solitude, mm-hmm. maybe solace, mm-hmm. right? It's like, where, where, can I, where can I go where someone is just going to know me? I don't have to explain why I'm here. They see me crying. It's not, it's not a like, what's wrong? Like, I have no idea what's wrong, but it's like, oh, what's wrong to open up the door for you to, to do your thing that happens on the cry couch in the break room. Very unique. So today uh, we're talking about being unique, right? Yes. And I think it's very important when we're in the break room that there's no judgment in no the judgment. break room. No judgment. You come in, it's okay to cry. Cry. Um, the cry couch is there for a reason. Mm-hmm. There's no judge. So how do we encourage teachers to be unique. I was reading on our show notes today mm-hmm. and you said, listen, you don't have to be anybody else. Don't compare yourself to the person next door. You are uniquely you and you can be that in the classroom. Why is it so important? You even said students can see right through you. They know when you're being fake. Yes. So why is it so important for teachers to come into their own skin and be comfortable there? Right. Well, I think it's important. Like we go to PDs and we see someone, we see Ron Clark or we see Dave Burgess or, or let's say we saw you teaching and I, I just, you guys, I just heard Derek do an event and I was taking furious notes and he killed it. So have him to your next event. And I was thinking some of the things that you said, I can't say. Uh, Some of the things that you did, I could, I can't be Derek. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can be me. Mm -hmm. I can lean into being the weird white lady at the front of the room. Uh Right? (laughs) With the bright colored glasses. (laughs) The the, bright colored glasses. The flowy clothes (laughs) and the big smile. And I think that we get stuck in there sometimes. Like, I'm going to try to do this. But then I think kids can see through that. So you lean into your strengths. What's your creativity? Uh, I have that dice where when I'm learning kids' names at the beginning, I call it the dice of destiny. Mm-hmm. It's the dice of destiny. You get picked when you don't want to be. It's the dice of destiny, the greatest <laughs> dice alive. Okay, that was pretty good. That was nice. Okay, it wasn't as good as you rapping. No, it. that's good though. Grab a pen and a pen. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. 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 Okay, <laughs> anyway, so... I could be doing a PD using yeah. my Dice of Destiny and, a, mm-hmm. you know, you got to go all in with the song if you're going to do it. Yeah. But, like, maybe Coach Sire isn't going to do the Dice of Destiny. Right. Maybe he's going to be, like, stupid and turn off. But what can Coach do? Mm-hmm. What can he lean into? Mm-hmm. And so that's really what I think that you should do. If you're good at magic tricks, lean into it. If you, what are you good at? Yeah. And lean into that. So I think dispelling the misnomer, the rumor, the myth, that there's one way to teach, I think is very important, right? There's so many different ways to get content and to get things to students, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I sometimes would get, like, a table and I would walk on it and I was on the desk and fun. Uh, But then I taught with a teaching partner who was just so zen. Mm -hmm. You want to do yoga in her class. Yeah. So you walked in, there's twinkle lights, and there's like, <laughs> it's like a whole vibe. I wish y'all could see her moving right now. You can't <laughs> see her, but her arms is like up in the air, and <laughs> her fingers are twinkling hey, in I space. I mean, if you take away my hands, I can't talk. 
I mean, and I would, I would want to go in there to like have a calm moment yeah. and not just me, uh-huh. the whole building would want to go into Amy's room yeah. to have a calm moment. Even the principal, like sometimes be like, Oh, I'm going to Miss Henson's class. Let's shout out to Miss Henson. I love you, Amy. Yeah. So this is why I think it's not only um, important that teachers find out who they are and they operate naturally in that space. Not only that, primarily, I think that's most important, but I think having the diversity of different teaching and personality styles is also good for the student population, would you say? I would agree. Yeah, not everybody's going to do it the same. I think where we get, where that can go wrong is like, the teacher that's like, well, I'm cool. And kind of, it becomes an unsafe situation. Right. That's not, I mean, we're going to follow procedure and we're going to make sure our kids are safe. Cause that's going to be number one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think everybody needs to lean in to what they're good at and to relentlessly do what's best for kids. Yeah. Be on team kid. And I think uh, you have some, some very basic like do's and don'ts. Yes, right? I do. In the, in the classroom. And I think as long as we build on those, then we can be the individual that we want to be. And I think that's really important. In the same way that my kids, uh, they love having mom and dad. Yeah. Right? We're two completely different personality styles. That If they want to know what we're doing next week, they go to mom. Right? If they want to have popcorn for breakfast, they come to dad. Right. You know, it's like <laughs> they just know that we have different things. And I think that's really cool. Like when I think back, as a as a student, I loved having Miss Bayuth, who was the choir mm, teacher. Oh, we've talked about her. Yeah, and I loved having, you know, the coaches that taught math and history and social sciences. And I loved the uh, ladies in the cafeteria because they were very motherly and they would give me extra food and support my horrible eating habits. But it was great, <laughs> you know, because that was their way of loving me. Great for you. Yeah, and, and I loved the ladies at the front desk in the office uh, because they were more, they were less motherly, but they were more like aunties. And they're like, boy, if you don't go into class, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like having it. all of these different personality styles was so important for my development, even as a young human, to see that people are different. And that's okay. Yeah. I mean, we've, we're raising these babies together. Yeah. The aunties in the front of the office, the coach down the hall. Yeah, we need every single one of us. Yeah. And so I think that's really important for all teachers to know. Right. Like, I, I'm not going to be you. You're not going to be me. Yeah. And, but we can do this together. Like, let's hold hands and do it together. God, that was very kumbaya. Yeah. But I mean, I, I mean it. And, and, and if, if we had one type of personality student, right. right, that would be one one thing. But we don't. We have so many different personality styles. And I think we have to have the diversity from the instruction side to meet those different personality styles. Like if I, I, I uh, there's a guy that, um, that early on in my facilitation career, uh, I was a part of this organization and he would train facilitators. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, Derek, your personality is so big and your voice is so heavy and your energy just like, it makes me, I can't even sit up close because I like want to lean back. And so he would, he stopped sitting in the front and he started sitting in the back of the room. But you didn't change your big personality because that I did not is... change. Okay, good. I did not change at all. I, in fact, I got bigger because, got bigger. <laughs> yeah, because when he moved to the back, there are people who then came to the front and they were leaning in. Right. Where he was leaning back, I was, those people were leaning into what I was saying. So the bigger I got and the louder I got, the more energetic I got, they were like, give me more and more yeah, and more yeah, and more. Yeah. Mm. Right. And he was like, whoa, 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 leaning back. That was me leaning back from the mic. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and so I think for every student who wants to lean in, they have a teacher that will lean in and meet them. And for the, the student who leans back, I think there's a teacher that will be more soft spoken and more whatever, more zen. A thousand percent. Like they need to be. Right. We got so many different personalities. I think having a diverse teaching staff allows us to meet those students where they are. Right. And I feel like sometimes in our society that we feel like we have to one up each other or we have to fight for space or we have to. That's not a thing. It shouldn't be a thing. I agree. Like there should be enough space for all of us and there should be all of us together doing what's best for kids. And I think teachers sometimes can feel alone on their island and they're not. Mm-hmm. And I love a principal and admin who supports the coming together as a family to help raise these babies together because that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, I think that's good. I also think it's important for teachers to know the personality styles of other teachers. So now I become a resource. 
So if I have a student that I don't connect well with, but I get a vibe for who they are, then I can be like, ooh, you like flowy clothes, your big bright smile, you like f- funny colored glasses. I know exactly who you need to you go like to. You like the skeleton hand no. weirdness. <laughs> I love that skeleton hand. Skeleton hand is so weird. I was, I know. I was at, I was in McAllister. Skele- oh. Well, I did get more skeleton hands. Um, they're on back order, <laughs> but. <clears throat> I was in McAllister talking. You bought them all. Talking, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I was talking, and and so I did a PD at the very beginning of school, like August, and I gave away some skeleton hands. And well, one of the teachers that was in that PD came to this other PD, and she had one. Shut up. And she was holding it, yeah. and so then she was like, "I brought both of mine," and she handed it to me. And I just, without even, like, realizing what I was doing, I started teaching the PD with the skeleton hands. Yeah. Without without any explanation. And I called on someone, and she's like, she looks at her table, and she's like, I'm going to ask. And they were like, do it, do it. She's like, what is with this weird (laughs) arm that you're holding? And I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, I was like, you win the prize. I gave it to her. I'm like, here you go. That's fine. Um, Because it's so fun. I'm like, this is the COVID skeleton arm. I love it. Yeah. I I I, I digress. What were we talking about? No, no, no. We're, so we're talking about just our different personality styles. And like um, I said, send it to Katie. Mm. And then you're like, it's the lady with the weird skeleton head. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, as an instructional coach, I made a list of every single teacher. Yeah. What their strengths were. Ooh. And here is, because as a new teacher, it's like, you get two days a full of meetings and go into your classroom, never oh to come gosh. out again. And so I'm like, here is this list of teachers. This is what they're good at. Here is their number and the room number. Use them. And the other teachers are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to I wanna help. So then they're like, I need that list too. So I gave it to everyone. I think it's amazing. So I can be like, okay, this kid, you know, needs, to, needs somebody to tell him dad jokes. I'm going to yeah. send him. To coach that area. Yeah. It's so important. And we aren't able to be the best resources that we can be if we're not being our most authentic selves. Right? I agree. If you're trying to be something that you're not, and I identify that as something that you naturally are, and then I begin to pull on that, uh, I don't know, let's let's just say I started using the skeleton hand. It's not going to go over well, right? It's like I can't keep using it. It's universal. Um, I'm going to say I'm probably not going to use the skeleton hand. You're going to use it. If I do it, it's going to be a nod to, like, if, if if something happens to where you can no longer teach, you've been blackballed from the teaching world, then <laughs> I'm going to commit to forever using the skeleton Just hand. Just, like, as a, like, for Katie Kinder. It's going to be like, uh, the... Ooh, I'm going to do it. Just... <laughs> Every single time I'm going to get up, I'm going to be like, shout out to Katie, skeleton hand. And then everybody in the audience is going to hold no, up that hold skeleton up. hand. And then we're going to have two skeleton hands and we're going to start a slow clap. Like, clap, 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 clap. Oh, gonna, my gosh. And then a revolution will happen. I know. I like it. I love it. But, but it's just like, I don't know that I can sustain that. Right. So if I'm trying to do something that I'm not, I can't sustain it. So why not just be who you are? With with the the safety measures in place, right? We got to have a bottom line, sure. right? And so when I think about, I mean, this this whole topic, and and I just want to shout out Katie because she uh, marked out all the the things that we're talking about, um, the topics for every episode. They're all coming from Katie's brain, from her experience. And so, uh, being authentic and being unique is so important that she made it one of our show uh, our show titles, one of our show topics. So if you're listening out there and you're a teacher and you're trying to figure out should I pull this from this person? And should I be like this person? Should I be like this person? I think we're saying it's okay to observe and see what works, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we have to make those things ours. We have to show up because kids, they smell a fake. Yes, they do. They know when you're not genuine. They know when you love them. They know when you don't. They know. They know. They're very intuitive. Yeah. And and I think the the, the, our, our, our coaching careers, our teaching careers, are um are too valuable to spend it being something else. Not trying to be someone else. Let's spend the most time being who we are. Okay, we got to get to our question. I'm ready. We're approaching 15 minutes. Are we? Are we are? Oh, I know. Okay. I always go so fast. So, um, speaking of being authentic and unique in yourself, uh, one of our listeners they said, "I've loved my school for years, but recently there have been some changes in leadership, and the place I've loved." 
doesn't really exist anymore. What should I do? Oh, that's heartbreaking. Can I elaborate on that real quick? Yeah. So this person, um, if I could, if I'm interpreting correctly, I love the environment. I love the culture. I get to be who I am. Um, but new leadership comes in and they don't um, support the culture that we've all loved. That we've all so, built. That we've all built. So maybe I'm feeling like I can't be unique anymore and I can't be myself and I can't teach the way that I've taught. What should I do? That's the question. Ooh, it's a, it's one of the broken things about education because they'll move principles after five years or even like a super successful principal. Yeah. Test scores are up here. Culture's great. Everybody wants to work there. Yeah. And they'll be like, well, we need you to do that again in this building. Yeah. And then they'll take them. And then maybe he takes half the staff yeah. with him. Oh, and my then... gosh. Wait, 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 wait. Principals take people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that, like, expected? Or is it, like, people like people and so they follow? I think it's a little of both. Yeah. Uh, I had a leader that I absolutely adored and he is a servant leader through and through. And when, and he, when he left, he's like, okay, you're coming with me. And I'm like, I'm not, I love you. I'm not. You stayed. I stayed because I was getting to loop with my kids. So I had him in seventh grade and then I had him in eighth. And yeah. I was like, that's more important to me than following you. But gosh, I missed him. Yeah. And then when he went to another school where his kids are and I get it, yeah. he's like, you coming over? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. So I, I get it. Some people followed, some people didn't. And it's just hard because it's um right around April, May, contracts go out and people start, you start to hear about people leaving yeah. and this family that you built is feeling shaky and you don't know. And yeah. it's hard. It's tough. Yeah. It's every year. So what do we, what do we tell our, our listener that says the environment I think sucks? She, I think she has two options. And I think I've said this before on this podcast. You yeah. can stay. You have said And that. you can fight. Yeah. Or you can go somewhere else. There's millions of schools. Millions. There's a lot of schools. <laughs> There's a lot of schools in and around where you live. Yeah. You don't have to go far to you find a teaching far. opportunity. Yeah. So you yeah. just have to decide what's more important. That's really good. So for our listener that asked the question, you have to decide what's important. Um, do you, do you stay and you help be a protector, guardian, ambassador of the culture that you love so much and try to keep it intact? Um, or do you adapt? And, and, and I'll say this, maybe, maybe the new culture that's trying to be put in place, maybe it works. And maybe she'll like that too. But sometimes we don't want to give it a chance. And I agree with that. I, I think brand new baby principal, uh -huh. brand new baby principal, been an assistant, was in the classroom, gone through all the things, think they're ready. It's the same thing as a first year teacher. Yeah. You have zero idea until you step in that role. Yeah. And then so their first year, they're going to drown some. Yeah. They're going to maybe keep their head above, maybe not. Uh, and then the second year, they're a little better. I think by year four, they're pretty okay, or they're not going to be. <laughs> and that year four is when you're like, That's okay, I'm year. out. <laughs> That's <laughs> the year where you figure out, I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, and I think the same thing for principals. Like, if somebody is doing something better than you in yeah. another building, go watch. Yeah. Go over there. Like, it's not a competition. Uh, so Can you lean into the mic and say that a little bit more firm? It is or? not a competition. Go watch people who are doing it well. Yeah. Cause, because our babies are in the balance. Yeah. yeah. You can be stubborn and not be the best version of yourself, but our kids suffer and our teachers suffer. Well, and they are. They're the they're who lose in all of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. So today we talked about uh, being unique. For our listeners out there, if you're a teacher and you stepped into the break room with us, um, I, we just heard the bell. We know we got to go. Yeah, no. But I, as you go back to your classrooms, as you go back into the hallway and um, you are exercising your uh, hallway leadership, what do we call it? Hallway leadership. Hallway leadership. Yeah. As you're exercising your hallway leadership back to your classroom, you leave in the break room, you've got a drink, you checked on your lunch, it's still there, right? The cry couch is still crunchy. No one's cleaned it, right? <laughs> As you go back to your classroom, we want to encourage you, be you. The be kids authentic. can smell a fake. Yes, yes, be authentic. Don't spend your time, waste your time trying to be somebody else. If you go next door, it's the classroom next door. Pull what's good. Make it your own. But we want you to know that you are enough. You are plenty. And we're so glad that you're teaching. And we don't want you to leave because you feel like you're not Coach Derek or Crazy Katie. <laughs> Skeleton Hand Katie. Yeah, yep. yeah. 
Cool, 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 cool. So, go ahead to your classroom. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Derek. I'm Katie. And this is The, the Break Room. room.